Hello everyone, welcome. Um, so this is going to be a video on matrix properties. It's going to be a crash course on the fundamentals of um, matrix um, uh, algebra. And it's going to be viewed as a prerequisite for um, optimization theory. So let's get started. I'm going to begin with something quite simple, um, something you've probably already seen before. We're going to be talking about the transpose, transpose um, of a matrix. And the transpose is written with a capital T above it like this. And so what that means is we've got the transpose, transpose of A. So this, this AT here stands for the transpose of your matrix A. Okay, now um, in case that doesn't make a lot of sense, let's cover a few different examples. Let's say um, I have a matrix A which is not necessarily square, maybe just 1, 2, something like that, or maybe 1, 7, or whatever. It doesn't matter. Some particular example. What is the transpose of A. Well, the transpose by definition turns your rows into columns and your columns into rows. So in this case, the transpose of this matrix would just be 1, 2. We really just flip it on its side. Let's cover another example. Let's say we have a 2 by 2 matrix. Let's say, I don't know, 3, 0, and then 5 and minus 2, for example. What would be a transpose in this case? Well, we turn our rows into columns and our columns into rows. So our row, our first row is 3, 0, so that becomes our first column. And the second row is 5 minus 2, so that becomes 5 and minus 2, like this. That would be your transpose. OK, so that's a good feeling for what a transpose is. Let's jump ahead, and now let's talk about symmetric matrices. So let's talk about symmetric matrices. Now, um, I think it's best to understand a symmetric matrix through an example first. Let me just give you an example of a symmetric matrix. A symmetric matrix um, could look like this. Um, let's say this is 5 and minus 3. And this is going to be, and I'll write a different color. This is going to be, let's call it um, uh, 6 and 6 along the diagonals here. Now, this matrix is um, symmetric. Precisely because if you look along the diagonal, all terms um, uh, reflected about that diagonal are equal. So this 6 is equal to this 6, and that's what makes it symmetric. Um, and you can have larger and larger symmetric matrices. Let me cover another example um, uh, just to let that sink in. Let's say you had something like, I don't know, 1, 2, uh, 4, and let's say you had, um, let me even write it in blue again. You had 7, 7, and let's say you had minus 6 and minus 6 here, and you had, I don't know, 4 here and 4 here. Now, this is also a symmetric matrix. Why is it symmetric? It's because um, uh, if, it's, if you look at the, um, if you put a mirror along the diagonal, then all these terms are the same. This is a minus 6 here, this is a 4 here, this is a 4 here. This is what we call a symmetric matrix, and I'll be talking about a property of that soon. Um, next, I want to talk about the inverse of a matrix, and I'll start writing it here. I'll talk about the inverse of a matrix here, and it's written with a um, fancy symbol. Um, we write this as A inverse, so with a minus 1 at the top here. And this stands for the inverse, inverse of your matrix A. Now, um, I'll be talking about other uh, types of inverses you can do um, in, in, uh, by the end of this video series. But for now, this is just the traditional inverse. And let me describe to you um, uh, why we use it, um, or let me try and justify its uh, usage. Let's say we had an equation to solve a bunch of linear um, algebraic equations in the form of ax is equal to b, where a is some matrix, x is some unknown vector, and b is some known vector. So a is known for example, and b is known, and, and c, uh, sorry, and x we want to solve for. So what we can do, it turns out, is we can just um, pre-multiply on the left-hand side by this mysterious inverse um, a matrix, and we will get a inverse times a times x is equal to a inverse times b. And the traditional inverse has this amazing property that if we get its inverse times by its original matrix, this will be equal to the identity matrix, I. And that will be equal to A inverse B on the right-hand side. 
Now, I haven't talked about the identity matrix, so let me actually just uh, quickly draw it here. The identity matrix is a very special and perhaps the best quality matrix you can ever have. It's, it, it is, it's symmetric, it's orthogonal, it's, it's fantastic. Um, it's just a whole bunch of ones along the diagonal and zeros everywhere else. So the, uh, this is the identity matrix. And one of the properties of the identity matrix is that if you multiply it by x, you just get x. So that's nice. So that means we can now find our value x, and we know that's just equal to a inverse b. Now, um, I won't be talking about the exact ways you calculate the inverse. It turns out computers are very fast at doing this. But I will just say one thing. I will say that um, for you to take the traditional inverse, a must be square. So its number of rows must equal to the number of columns. And invertible. Makes sense. In order to invert it, it needs to be invertible. But what do I mean by invertible? What I really mean is that the determinant of a is not 0. Um, I won't be talking about what a determinant is. Once again, you can calculate that um, in MATLAB or, or Python very quickly. I want to keep this a very high-level crash course. OK, now that we've talked about this, now we can actually start talking about some properties of matrices. Let's talk about some properties of matrices. Probably the most obvious one we can think of is that um, a symmetric matrix has the following property, where A is equal to A transpose. This is, this is true if A is symmetric. Now, let's see if we can justify this. If we turn our rows into columns and our columns into rows, then you'll end up with the exact same thing here, right? The first row is 5, 6, so that becomes 5, 6 of this first column. Second row will be um, 6 minus 3, and that becomes 6 minus 3 here. You get the exact same thing. So if A is symmetric, then this property holds. So this is often used as a definition of a symmetric matrix. But I just wanted to cover some intuition first. OK, another thing is, Perhaps I should have written this first. Um, in, in matrix algebra, AB does not always equal to BA. This is a little bit confusing because we're used to dealing with scalar numbers where if we multiply two scalars together, it doesn't matter which way we multiply them. That is not generally true when we deal with matrices. I should also mention that. Um, so I want to make that very clear. That's a not equal sign. Another thing I would like to talk about is another property of the transpose, which is that A, B transpose is equal to B transpose A transpose. And notice that, um, so A and B are matrices. They need not be square. In fact, let me write that down. A and B do not need to be square. in order for this property to hold. And what's so interesting is if I take the transpose of two matrices multiplied by each other, then the order of the matrices flip, and we just transpose each of them individually. So that's, that's an interesting property. And in fact, you can prove from this result um, a more general result, which is that A, B, C transpose is equal to, well, the same thing holds true. You can write this as C transpose, B transpose, A transpose. And once again, um, A, B, and C do not need to be square in this case. So I won't even bother writing that down. Um, <clears throat> so that's an interesting result here. Another useful property is this one. And let me write this down. This is going to be A inverse transpose. So first we invert it, then we transpose it. It turns out that will always be equal to A transpose inverse. So that's interesting. The order actually doesn't matter. But what does matter is that A needs to be invertible, and it needs to be square. So I'll just say A needs to be square and invertible. So but that's interesting. So it really doesn't matter what order. And that's useful for some proofs, which we'll be covering later. Another one is that A, B, inverse is equal to B inverse, A inverse. And so once again, similar to the transpose, the B and A switch sides, and you just inverse them individually. 
And I should say that in this case, um, A and B need to be square and invertible. And invertible. And once again, what do I mean by square? Well, this is an example of a square matrix because its number of rows is equal to its number of columns. OK, that's the bare basics of linear algebra. I think in the next video, I'll cover some um, properties of um, orthonormal uh, matrices. So I'll see you there.